And so we return to the Rolls Royce. Notice the silver lady in the bottom right hand corner. To get into the Euro Tunnel and to cross over from horrible rainy wet England to do 25,000 kilometers around Europe and North Africa before returning, we hope, in a few months' time. One of my favourite ever films came out in, I think, 2008. It was called In Bruges. And I still think it's probably the best film of this century so far. I'm a big fan of Martin Madonna, who was actually the writer and director of the film, but also of Brendan Gleeson, who starred in it, and is one of my great heroes as an actor. Colin Farrell, who was absolutely superb in it. Um, Liam, it really is one of those films that you have to see. If you've not yet seen it, might I suggest you do so. You can get it, I think, through Amazon and all those same places to see the films. It won quite a few awards. Ralph Fiennes is fantastic in it. Um, it just captures everything about life in this century as far as humanity is concerned. Uh, I've been a big fan of Martin McDonald ever since. He's made some incredible Oscar-winning movies since, but this, to me, remains his very best and has given me a huge desire on my bucket list to visit Bruges where I've never been. So here I am, finally, in Bruges, looking at the city. I'm far from convinced by Belgium. It seems to mainly be a city of chips, beer, lace, and chocolate. Uh, that's Bruges, anyway, as far as I'm concerned. Bruges, which is described by different characters in, in Bruges as a shithole and a fairy tale town. I find it a little bit of a combination of the two. It's very pretty in a quaint medieval kind of way. Um, but it's also a bit boring in a very Belgian kind of way. Mind you, there's a lot to see, and it doesn't take away from my feeling that In Bruges is the best film of the century. I've been trying to make films myself this century, uh, one of which features several numbers that I think are rather spectacular, including this one, which was originally by the Angelettes, and is now in Me, 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 the movie, by the Sirens, Don't Let Him Touch You. My wonderful Angelette, who nearly had a huge hit with that in the 70s, mine too for the movie by the Sirens. You meet a boy, bright sparkling eyes, he seems kind of nice, perhaps a little shy, you walk you home. Kiss you on the doorstep Next night will hold your hand And Don't let him touch you Don't let him touch you He's playing the game of love And he's trying to see how much you let him have And if he has you, he will run away and leave you If he has you, he will leave you Don't let him touch you He'll talk and talk how it's hard for guys He'll 
be good to you, hold you when you cry. He is the only one. Now your love life's begun. He'll hold you close to him. And don't let him touch you. Don't let him touch you. He's playing the game of love and he's trying to see how much you'll let him have. one of those reminiscing days I remember when I came out of prison after serving three and a half years uh, that's half my time of seven years for crimes which never happened by the way and which I am still appealing 23 years later the process goes very slowly um, it dawned on me when I came out everybody said to me oh how did you cope in there and how are you coping so well outside? Because within 24 hours, I was back to normal. And the probation people, the parole people who let you out said, how can you cope so easily? I said, I don't understand what you're saying. Life inside is just the same as life outside, apart from a, f a few details. You don't see the same people that you saw before, but you see the same people that you're seeing now. And the people we meet and talk to in life change on a regular basis. Um, you're not eating some of the food you choose to eat inside or drinking the kind of drink. But we all change our diets re fairly regularly. That makes no difference. Where we live, where we sleep, that changes. You're in different hotels or in your home or wherever. It being in a prison cell doesn't make any difference. So I could never quite understand Life for me was exactly the same, except in small details. Oh! Oh! Watching Louis Theroux for the first time interviewing Pete Doherty uh, the other week and thinking to myself, Pete Doherty rather escaped me. He sort of emerged in the early years of this century with a group called the Libertines who made a couple of half-decent records, but not much better than that. Then went on to become a sort of mini-celebrity by dating various pretty women who were quite famous. Um, and that was about the end of Pete Doherty. Louis Theroux now interviews him, which has been a very sad experience. It shows how, how somebody can get 15 minutes of fame 
and blow it basically entirely through use of drugs and consuming substances and so on and end up a very fat and b very very unhappy fame is not a good thing to get addicted to early in life i can tell you oh! It's quite bizarre how here in Bruges, which I suppose is very much a tourist city, medieval city going back literally hundreds and hundreds of years, how many people come up to me and recognise me and say, oh, hello, so nice to meet you, Mr King, and so on. I have to admit, usually rather older people, uh, nobody under the age of 50, or I wouldn't have thought, but it does happen all the time, and it makes me think... How odd it must be to have done so few things in one's life. I've done so many things and enjoyed my life enormously. And it's been very, very rewarding, but very fascinating. But how about people like Pete Doherty, who've only actually done one thing in their lives, and they just manage to sort of go through the rest of their life, rather sad, reminiscing, and then they die. Uh, I'm closer to death now I'm coming up for 79 but uh, it does make me wonder what do people do who achieve very little in their lives? Of course one of the things that may be said is that achieving something in life isn't necessarily achieving something that's famous or commercially successful like making films or records or writing books or anything but is in personal relationships, getting married, having children, watching them grow. That must be very rewarding in its own right, but still very one-dimensional, I would have thought. Or am I wrong? Is it satisfying? Do please take a look at the film in Bruges. I know you can get it on Amazon Prime, for example, for literally only, I think, £3.99 for rental. And it really is well worth looking at. For me, it's the best film of the century so far. If you like Colin Farrell, if you like Ralph Fiennes, if you like Brendan Gleeson, and indeed, if you like Martin McDonough, who's gone on to make several huge Oscar-winning movies since then, you'll love In Bruges. Believe me if you haven't seen it. Um... One of the great joys of life is meeting one's heroes. And my heroes aren't actually film directors or people who make movies or actors or stars or celebrities. My heroes have always been record producers. Joe Meek, who was perhaps the greatest ever British record producer. Phil Spector, who was perhaps the greatest record producer of all time. These are the people I really, really rate plus songwriters and a few performers. One of my great heroes is Bob Dylan, and one of the joys of driving around Europe, as I tend to do um, in the summer and in the winter, is actually listening to some of the tracks made by some of my old heroes, like Bob Dylan. And what I'm listening to at the moment in the car is Blonde on Blonde, the album he made when he went electric which includes on it, I think, his best ever song, lyrically and melodically, Just Like a Woman. I covered it when I first heard the demo of it. I thought it was actually marvellous. At the same time, the group Manfred Mann, who were very popular in the 60s, had just got rid of their lead singer, Paul Jones, mistake, and taken on a new singer, Mike Darbo, who was OK, and went on to have a lot of hits with them. But there was loads of publicity when he started, and the first record they put out by him singing lead was Just Like a Woman. Not nearly as good a version as mine, I didn't think, and certainly nowhere near as good as Bob Dylan's, but, of course, all the publicity went on the fact that they changed their lead singer. So, as a result, they were the ones that got the hit and not me. I still think my version is the best of the lot. So, uh, well, when I say the best of the lot, it's almost as good as Bob Dylan's. But when you take a listen to it 
and look at the streets of Bruges, see what you think, whether you agree or not. This is my version, Jonathan King's Just Like a Woman. Enjoy Bruges, and I look forward to seeing you again somewhere else in Europe in a few days' time. And do make comments if you enjoy these travel bits or if you're bored by them. It'll then be episode 57. Bye. She makes love just like a woman Yes, she does, and she aches just like a woman But she breaks just like a little girl Queen Mary, she's my friend Yes, I believe She finally sees that she's like all the rest With her fog, her amphetamine and her pearls She takes just like a woman Yes she does, she makes love just like a woman Yes she does, and she aches just like a woman but she breaks just like a little girl It was raining from the first And I was dying of thirst So I came in here And your love time curse hurts But what's worse is this Just like a little girl